So it's my pleasure to speak with Samir Mitragatri, who's the Acrovo's Professional Progress winner for this year. He is the Mellichamp Systems Bio Chair at UC Santa Barbara, where I'm also from. Um, he's also the editor of the new journal Bioengineering and Translational Medicine that's published by AICHE and SBE. And he's a recent electee of the National Academy of Engineering and the National Academy of Medicine. Um, so, absolutely. I enjoy introducing you. Um, the title of your talk is Understanding and Overcoming the Body's Biological Barriers for Drug Delivery. Um, and I understand you're going to speak about the innate obstacles of the human body which limit drug delivery. Can you tell us a little bit about what those barriers are? Sure. So the human body is full of biological barriers. In fact, without those barriers, we would not exist. If you think about the body, it's full of metabolic reactions. And the body wants to control when they happen and where they happen. And the way of controlling that is putting barriers in place. So let me give you a few examples. Skin is probably the strongest barrier you're going to find. It protects us from the outside environment. It does not allow the entry of viruses and pathogens and toxins. And without that, we would not exist. We would actually lose water <coughs> and the body very quickly. Another barrier is the intestine, very different kind. Uh, it is uh, full of enzymes, we digest proteins, so that whatever we eat does not go into the blood circulation on its own. And without that, we again would not be able to exist. And if you think about all other organs in the body, whether it's cell membrane, whether it's organelles, whether it's blood vessel, whether it's brain, all of them have barriers of their own to protect and control what they do and how they do it. So um, drugs and medicines have been around a long time. What are you trying to do differently than what they used to do? So if you take the drug orally, uh, you can certainly get it into the intestine. And from there on, it will go where it wants to go. And sometimes it works and you don't need to do anything. But most of the times it doesn't work. For example, if you take a protein, it's going to be digested in the stomach and you won't see any of that in the blood circulation. So let's say you want to deliver insulin orally. It's not going to happen if you just dump insulin into the intestine. So what we like to do is to understand these barriers. What is it that makes them a barrier? What are their fundamental building blocks? Can we understand them? Can we model them? And how can we use the understanding to overcome them so that we can control where the drug goes and when it goes there? So can you give an example of how understanding one of these barriers then allows you to design something that could overcome the barrier? So one example is skin. Um, skin has a phenomenal organization that stops the entry of foreign molecules. And if you look at the structure of the skin, it has outstanding lipid bilayers, which make it extremely tough barrier. So we spent about five years trying to understand what is it about the skin that makes it a good barrier. And if you try to perturb it by putting some chemicals on it, how does it work? And using that understanding, we developed mathematical models that actually told us what are the molecular features that are required to make the skin open in a safe way. And with that, we came up with an idea that is based on ionic liquids. And we especially have one ionic liquid that you can put on the skin. It partitions into the skin, makes the skin permeable, and allows the entry of proteins, for example, insulin, for the treatment of diabetes. So um, to wrap up, if there's one message you could give to young people entering this part of the profession, particularly bioengineering and biological transport, what would it be? I guess a uh, couple of messages. One is that uh, not to be afraid of challenges because it is extremely tough to deliver drugs in the body. Um, we do not fully understand laws of biology. So it's going to be a, a tough task, but not be afraid about that and just go about trying to understand. Uh, how it works because in reality we cannot fix anything that we don't understand. So that focus on basic science is important. At the same time, translation of the ideas into the clinic is also important. Because once you have an understanding, it's actually, I would say, uh, uh, almost an essential or responsibility to use that understanding to come up with a better solution to the problem and stand behind it to take it all the way to the actual end user, which in this case is the patient. Thank you. Thank you.